begin with breaking news out of the White House. President Trump wrapping up a meeting with retail executives. Kayla Tausch has got the very latest. Kayla. Melissa, the president tweeting that this White House press conference will now be at 5.30 p.m., where we expect the conversation to revolve around what the nation is doing to get testing capacity online so that more Americans can get tested and more Americans can go back to work. The White House is expected to release two documents this evening. One is essentially a chronicle of actions taken to date so far to ramp up the capacity of testing in this country. The second is essentially a blueprint for states for how they can get access Access to more tests and what resources the federal government has that are available to them. And the president hosted many leaders from retail and pharmacy companies at the White House today to talk about how to leverage the retail industry to provide some of these locations for testing. Here's what some of these companies said that they were willing to do. CVS and LabCorp are expected to provide about a thousand locations with a capacity to run uh, 1.5 million tests a month, according to uh, some of the uh, promises that were released today. Walmart separately is expected to open a total of 100 sites. They say that they will be able to test 20,000 a week. Target has provided some parking lots for other personnel to be able to run those tests, but it's unclear uh, what they are able to do with their own personnel after the president earlier this year asked them personally to get involved in this fight. And then there are a couple others um, as well. LabCorp and, and I said... Um, I said, I believe, CVS earlier, Melissa, it's LabCorp and Walgreens conducting 50,000 tests a week at drive through locations in 49 states. It's CVS that's going to provide 1,000 locations and 1.5 million tests every month. They're hoping to get online to that level by the end of May. Now, a lot of these facts are coming in real time. We're expecting a little bit uh, more information to come out of the White House momentarily, Melissa, but certainly the White House is trying to leverage the private sector here to get all of these tests up and running, even if it is um, several weeks after it probably would have been most helpful. Melissa. All right, Kayla. Thank you. Kayla Tausche in Washington. Retail, by the way, a big winner today. The XRT jumping 5%. So as retailers bet on reopening the economy, are you betting on retail? Should you? And are tests really the key here for this sector, Guy? I think you bet on some of them. Are tests the key for the sector, for the market? I know everybody's pointing to that, and that makes obvious sense. But I you know, I think there are a lot of other things <clears throat> under the surface that are sort of very concerning. But I'll answer your question. I, the retailers that have done well, in my opinion, are going to continue to do well. I mean, we've talked about Dollar Gen for a while. That continues to go higher. Today, I thought what's fascinating was the move higher in Target post-earnings last week, and then obviously the move lower in Walmart. I think that trend will continue. I still think you can buy Target, and if you're into it, you sell Walmart against it. And I think all these big names, the Macy's, Nordstrom's, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, that had 10 to 18 percent moves, to me, I'm not really sure why necessarily today, but it's a lot of short covering uh, into earnings over the next couple of weeks. So I wouldn't be chasing those, but I'd be staying with the names that I mentioned prior. And the volatility, Dan, is what you pointed out on our conference call earlier today. For every 5% move up in the XRT, we see, we see a 5% or bigger move down on the same index. Yeah, really interesting, Mel. I mean, when you think about, uh, obviously, retail was, was a sector that you expected to be hit when 95% of U.S. retailers were forced to be closed. Um, but down here now, we're seeing extreme volatility. And I think it's in a lot of these much weaker names when you think about Macy's, Nordstrom's, uh, Kohl's, some of these uh, big box guys. Um, you know, they've just had a really tough, tough time here. And to Guy's point, you know, Amazon, Walmart, Target, Costco, these guys have been anointed the winners here. They were anointed the winners before this crisis. And because of the forced shutdown of all of their competitors and their, their omni-channel approaches, um, they've just done great. I mean, Kayla had mentioned all this testing. LabCorp separately said that they could also do antibody tests and expect to be able to do 200,000 tests per day by mid-May. So, Tim, I, you know, of the four of you, I would point to you as perhaps the one most likely to actually walk into a store and buy something, maybe a rag and bone suede vest or whatnot. <laughs> but what will it take for, for you yeah. to go into that store? I mean, is it a widespread antibody test? I mean, that's, that's sort of the question here, right? How long can retailers withstand would, this pain? 
Yeah, they would need to have some some kind of suede or leather advertised in the window mill. Um, so I, I think the look, if you look at the outperformance of retail and remember, uh, this is a sector that's outperformed the S&P from the bottom by almost 17 percent. If you if you just do the SPY against the XRT of where there had been massive, massive underperformance. And just today, you broke above that 50. Uh, it's no question that, that retailers are getting some sense, at least, that you have a little bit more visibility into truly where uh, you have revenue stream again after this complete shutoff. So the, the question for retail also has been the most levered names were the ones that were under the most pressure. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they suddenly have a lifeline. But we've talked almost, well, we've talked a lot about Macy's. And Macy's is one where uh, I don't think Macy's comes out of this a stronger company. But at some point, the valuation uh, was really a, a very attractive or is attractive on, relative to the parts, the real estate value alone. So um, something like a Best Buy, which also the analog from 20, 2008, 2009, is, is something that investors, I think, punished more uh, going into this relative to what they thought the consumer was going to be like uh, coming out of COVID-19. We still don't totally know. Um, but I think someone like a Best Buy is, is very well exposed to these uh, to these stimulus checks that are actually going to households. So I think there are some relative winners in here. And I agree with Guy. Relative value is the other part of this. I, I don't want to own Walmart at, at this valuation. And whereas I think someone like Target, while I don't love that story for the consumer overall, it's a much more attractive trade. Indulge me in this contrarian line of thinking, Brian Kelly, because I know you are a contrarian at heart, so I, I'm picking the right person on the sure. panel for this question. But in terms of this move in the XRT, could we be seeing this sector anticipate a reopening of the economy in advance, as stocks do, especially as the Texas governor announced that, you know, that April, April 30th expiration of the stay-at-home order, that is going to expire. So Texas mm -hmm. is going to effectively reopen to some degree already this week. Yeah, so we're going to see Texas and Georgia are going to be these kind of test case for us, if you will. Um, you know, to me, when I look at what's going on in retail, you say this is going this event is going to accelerate the trends that have been happening in the past, which is obviously the trend to online, you know, curbside pickup, those type of things. That to me is what's happening here. So I don't want to be in a Macy's. I don't buy the story that Macy's real estate is worth what it was prior to this crisis. I mean, there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of real estate devaluation. And in fact, Macy's reminds me very much of Sears years ago when you used to make that play. Well, they're going to be able to sell off the real estate. And then Sears went to a bagel. That's zero. So I think, you know, Macy's, couple of the other retailers that are heavy with asset, asset heavy, they're going to have problems. The ones that are seamlessly going online, you're seeing it with Walmart, potentially Target. Uh, those are the ones that are going to be the winners out of this. I like your choice of bagel over donuts and nod to New York, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Guy, in terms of the accelerant, you know, that that actually is a theme in this whole pandemic, right? I mean, we had that Moffat Nathanson note just last week about Disney and, and streaming and how usually situations like this are accelerants to trends that had already been in place. They actually use that exact word, accelerant. So can we apply that, in your view, to retail? I believe so. I, you know, I absolutely believe so. We've said this for a while now. Many of these retailers that we just talked about at length, I mean, they were on this trajectory prior to the word coronavirus ever being uttered in mainstream media. So they were going that way. Obviously, this, to your word, and Moffat Nathan, Nathanson's, accelerated it. But I'll ask you this. You know, what's that day after Thanksgiving? What do they call that thing? Black Friday. Uh, Black, Friday Black Friday. When everybody and then there lines was up. Monday. Yep, right, yep, everybody. Yep. It's good. Happy Turkey Day, yeah, guys. those things, right? And then everybody, gone. like, lines up. What you Do you think... <laughs> Seriously, do you think you're going to be hordes of people lining up when they open apart, the first maybe? Macy's? Not. Or no, is the short answer. I mean, they short they can open whatever they want, but people aren't racing back. I mean, they could say that they'll pay you to go on an airplane right now, but it's not happening. So, despite the you know, I understand people want to be optimistic. I get it. Trust me, I get it. I just don't think we're at that place right now where people are ready. You know, the pent up demand that everybody talks about, the president talks about, I understand it in theory. I don't necessarily know if it happens in, in real life. Dan Quick. 
Yeah, just real quickly, Jeffrey Gunlock this afternoon on the Halftime Report talked about on the other end of this crisis that we may see a very, very different consumer. This consumer in 2019 was going crazy on credit to consume at levels of 90 percent of GDP versus normally 70 percent. So when you think about the massive job losses that we have had in such short period of time and the likelihood that they just don't come back full swing for at least a year, year and a half. Consumption may be down a great deal. Um, we may get back to some saving. We may get to um, the pent up demand, maybe for these checks, but on the way out, we may not be as um, uh, just splurging on concessionary items, especially big ticket items, the way we had been the last few years.